All right, well, welcome to my video on reflection zone mapping. I built this tool to uh, accompany the reflection website here, which I describe in another video. There's also a little geoid um, tab where you can get the conversion between ellipsoidal height and sea level height. So let's just go back to reflection zones. The goal here is with a little bit of information about what you think the reflector height is, whether it's sea level or not, what will the reflection zones look like for that site? So we're gonna use existing sites to start with. And I'm gonna do bare soil ones first, not the water ones. So I'll do a couple of these. P041 is one in um, Boulder. I'm gonna start out doing it wrong, which is to use mean sea level and the defaults, which are 5, 10, 15 degree elevation angles and azimuth angles between zero and 360. Now, when I submit that, I'll get a warning that I've used a reflector height that's far too big. Excuse me, and that's because the actual elevation of, of Boulder, Colorado is far too high above the water at the oceans on either coast to be valuable. What we wanna do is set the reflector height manually that would be two, two meters for this particular site. And it's a bare soil site, and I tend to use everything between five and 25 degrees. Let's set all the azimuths to be acceptable. And let's see what comes back. Uh, what comes back, in fact, are the latitude, longitude, and height. The reflector height was set by me. Elevation angles are uh, described here. And then the colors are not described in detail, but you basically, as the elevation angle gets bigger, the ellipses get closer and closer to the GPS antenna or GNSS antenna. So the yellow ellipses are the five degrees, the blue is 10 and so on. I'm allowing all azimuth angles, but remember there are no satellites at basically these mid-latitude regions like Boulder, Colorado to the north and the similar hole for Australia in South America, if you were looking to the south. Um, so that's all normal, but it does give you a scale of how big the reflection zone uh, will be in total because your entire reflection zone includes all these ellipses, unless you choose to change it. So for some reason you say, no, I don't, I don't wanna use all of them. Uh, and you say, well, I want two meters, I want all elevation angles, but you know, I know that only the east part of the field I'm working in is useful, and, it, and then you can use this kind of thing. The main thing that's gonna tell you whether you have a good uh, region is basically how planar the surface is. And this app doesn't tell you that directly. What you wanna do is use the data to do that. Uh, you'll be able to tell whether the reflection zone retrievals are good or bad based on that. Now, you can use larger reflector heights. SMM3, for example, is something where it has been set very high uh, deliberately uh, by the, the crew. It's um, 15 meters tall. So it's up here at the top of this um, tower. And when you show all azimuth, you'll notice there is no hole at this particular site. And um, that's because the satellite coverage in the poles is quite different than it is, say, in Boulder, Colorado. I won't go into the details, but uh, a lot of people don't realize that and think that the hole is persistent up to polar regions. Uh, for You can't see it quite well here, but for example, if I, change the azimuth so you can see a little better by say 90 say to 180 just so that you can see things. Um, I'll point out that there is a concern with these structures here and if you were trying to measure snow accumulation which is the goal here you wouldn't want to include those regions and there might be other uh, reasons that you would want to restrict it and for that I would direct you to the paper on my website. So the point of this for snow and eventually soil moisture, polar applications on ice sheet. It's just to get an idea of what is the horizontal extent of those reflections for a given reflector height over uh, a set number of elevation angles. 
Now let's look at water reflections. These are a little more interesting because you have to be a little bit more restrictive. Uh, ten, uh, my tendency when we did uh, PBOH2O for soil moisture and snow and even vegetation is we used everything we could. If we clearly weren't getting good reflections from a certain azimuth and, or if we knew that it wasn't a good azimuth, we did restrict it. But we started out assuming it was a good site. For water reflections, I think you need to be a little more careful. So let's take AT01 is the poster child for GNSS reflections. It is on the coast, so I'm gonna say use mean sea level. I'm gonna start out with 5, 10, and 15, and I'm gonna hit the submit button. It's in Alaska, so you're gonna see, just as within Greenland, it all goes all the way around. But if you look at it, you can see that it's clearly hitting soil here, you don't really, it doesn't look like you're gonna to wanna to get any of these reflections. Uh, this is 5, 10, 15. It turns out if we go back and reset it, let's set A T O zero one. Let's, well, no, I'm sorry. Let's use mean sea level. Let's keep it at 5, 10, 15. But now let's be a little more restrictive, maybe 30. Okay, uh, that's gonna be a better reflection zone. Right here, mm, that looks bad. So maybe you wanna restrict that to maybe 230 or something. And probably if there are satellites that are uh, giving you good reflections, you might be able to get some reflections here in the Northeast, <clears throat> excuse me. And again, this is mean sea level. Uh, if you had a large tidal ex uh, extent, you might have to be a little more restrictive. Now let me show you one that's a little taller. Uh, AC12 is one we used in our tsunami warning paper that came out earlier this year in uh, GRL. So you're probably not familiar with it, uh, but it is a very tall site. I'm gonna allow all azimuths, but I'm gonna restrict it to five to 10 degrees. And the reason is here I'm sitting 68 meters above sea level. But I'm on the western side of this little uh, inlet, and I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to see to the east. But it turns out, when you look at the data, you are able to see over here, over here, all the way over to here. Uh, so this will, again, though, give you understanding of why the reflections here are failing to a certain extent, um, but that you can, in fact, get good reflections uh, at a site that's 68 degrees above sea level. Another site that's uh, really kind of interesting is Esfos, which is in South Africa. You can't use mean sea level because it's an interior site. Uh, I happen to know that it's about 25 meters above the reflecting surface, so I'm gonna put that in. And I'm also going to restrict five to 10 degrees here. And I'm gonna start out showing say zero to 180, I'm not gonna end up keeping that, but I'm gonna start that way. Now the site's in South Africa. And um, again, I'm not looking at the ocean, I'm looking at this reservoir here. And if I restrict my elevation angles, and again, here I went from zero to 180, that's, uh, and remember there's a hole uh, in the Southern hemisphere. So that's why it stops here, it looks like, a, of course, 180 is too far. Maybe you want to go to about 80 degrees. And you might be able to get a few more reflections in here at the negative uh, values, but this is for 25 meters. You get excellent uh, retrievals for this site uh, because this GPS antenna is uh, quite high uh, above this little hill and it can look into this reservoir. The issue that's gonna come up is whether you have high sample rate data to use at this site. So for example, 30 second data would never cut it. Uh, you're gonna need higher rate data than that. And we'll talk about that separately because it's not an issue for the reflection zones. It's an issue for how to run your software, I'm sorry, how to run your GPS receiver. And then I'll just show one more. Uh, it's in Greenland, Thule. And um, it's gonna be a sea level reflection. I'll keep it at uh, 5, 10, 15. Let's just submit it and see what comes up. Uh, 
the photo which I put in there, it's uh, the, the database of photographs come from UNAVCO or ones that I've uploaded. You can see here, even though the photograph might make you think that it's right next to the water, it's actually set back quite a bit. And um, you're probably not gonna wanna include this red region, which is 15 degrees. It's, it's just going to get you not far enough into the water. So what you're gonna wanna do is restrict it here and, and maybe just go down to 10 or 12 degrees elevation angle. So let me go back. Um, I could also just edit up in the, um, up here. Let's use mean sea level. Let's uh, go to 12 degrees. And let me see, I'm trying to remember. It was like, was it 180 to 270? I'm sorry, I can't remember. Uh, I think that's pretty good. I mean, it's a good start. Um, so this would be five degrees, blue is seven, 10 is magenta, 12 is this green. You might be able to get a little bit more in here, but you're probably gonna end up on the soil, which might mean you lose this green section. Um, anyway, the, the point of this uh, web app is to give you an idea of how to set your azimuth elevation angle, angle mass within the Python software. So um, again, if you're doing soil moisture or eventually uh, snow depth, snow accumulation on ice sheets, you're often able to use everything around the GPS site up to 25 degrees elevation angle. The main issue is to make sure your surface is relatively planar for sea level and for lakes. You have to be a little bit more careful because you wanna make sure you're reflecting off the water and, um, and not the soil. And that means you emphasize typically lower elevation angles. So I'm gonna stop right there and uh, thank you for watching.